Aston Villa vs Newcastle postponed due to covid but things could have been worse you could have been an Arsenal fan hello and welcome to all balls a show that keeps you up to date with all the premier league action and fantasy football tips with me today i have in liverpool's away jersey from 1723 scotty <laughs> From behind the camera to front of the camera, how does it feel? Thank you, thank you, Rahul, for having <laughs> me on the show. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on the show with you. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. It's yes. good to know. Let's get straight into it. Yes, Burnley let's. versus Everton. Burnley thumped last week. Everton probably in a game with Leeds, which was a defensive shocker. But they both coming off losses. Burnley, you know, the heavier of the two. Dominic Calvert Lewin in hot form. So, what are your thoughts on that game? Um honestly going into this game I think uh, Everton have the upper hand um Burnley they were they were not that they were terrible against City it was the first two goals I think that were defensive lapses that actually threw the game away from them in the first 10 15 minutes I think uh take nothing away from City uh but uh, Everton on the other hand See Ever- Ever- the thing is Everton everyone looks at Everton and thinks Richarlison Calvert-Lewin and uh Hames, Hames. what they are missing right now i think that is very important is coleman and uh, dinia i think those are the two key uh, factors that they are missing out and you know whether it's defensively and offensively that help them but uh, i think going into this game i think everton are just going to run all over burnley because burnley they've got one win which was you know not the most impressive and everton are you know hot and cold in form but quality on paper everton have the upper hand definitely so predictions I think uh, a 3-0 for Everton. A 3-0 for Everton. 3-0 for Calvert Lewin in your fantasy for, for sure. <laughs> City versus Fulham at the Etihad Scott City rampant again. Ooh. On the other hand, Fulham shocking Leicester. You know, you're sitting there Fulham conceding goals, Jamie Vardy made him captain, you're chilling and then boom. That was fun to but, watch. But yeah, I mean, but before you know we get to Fulham, let's get to City. Pep has done something you know we've seen we've seen city from a previous season somewhere yeah for sure man i mean i'm a liverpool fan and uh, watching something like that was a little scary to be honest because city looked like the old city uh i'm hoping it was just a bad game for burnley that made city go all uh, rampant like that but uh, looking at them they're looking like a far more organized team right now from what we saw in the start of the season Uh, Mendy and uh, Walker making those runs down the flank. Uh, Mares and Torres looking like animals on the flanks. Also, De Bruyne is just a, a he's world class. A touch of class, man. I mean, what can you even say about him? The way he finds players is just unbelievable. I mean, sometimes I think he's just like not even looking at them and and finds them, man. I don't know what he's doing to do that, but it's great. And uh, what you should be scared of now is they've done this without Sterling and Aguero. Exactly. without a sterling and an aguero of course bonley is you know struggling they've had only one win but mares this season you know he got his 100th goal involvement fernand torres first, first premier league goal mendy first goal for the club and it was quite a controlled finish i mean it was a goal oh, of quality it was quality. a beautiful finish it, it was, was the city you associated you know with the all or nothing with with a pep team you yeah. know and this is something that you know people have now suddenly come back saying that Okay now they're back in the title race. It yeah. takes one game. One game. Similarly for Fulham, it took one game. They were down and out. Like I said I was waiting, you know, for Jamie Vardy to run all over them, for yeah. Leicester to run all over them, but it didn't happen. Leicester were poor, yes. But Fulham took their chances. Caviero finally puts in a penalty. A penalty, thank yeah, God. Yeah, I mean, he finally <laughs> puts one in. Fulham finally yeah. put a penalty. And Lookman's pace is pretty Lookman decent. Lookman and Loftus-Cheek are adding a lot to yeah. the wings, man, and they're looking good. They're it's, looking it's, good. They're looking good. So I mean, again, I do not feel that you know they are going to trouble a city in form. But momentum is important in these kind of games. You know, and the games are so crunched, so close to each other. But again, like the last game on paper, quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, I'm happy for Fulham, man. To be honest, like. for scotty also you know what i mean like watching your team play well and then miss penalties where they have the chance to take get the whole three points is is like it's it's sad but uh, they finally got their win against leicester that's going to give them great confidence going into this one i don't think that they'll do too much to disturb city to be honest but 
if they can do to leicester then why not try with yeah, city scott parker must be kicking himself like okay we beat leicester and now we manchester city in front of us but i mean what what better way to go into meet city than beat leicester before and this and with this season the way things are going you never know you just never know man 7 to like like we we were discussing like you've discussed with ruan like you've discussed with sammy it's uh the audience not being there the crowds not being there just plays such a different role in the whole thing so you never know man they can go in to this game with full guns blazing and even disturb city so are you backing a fulham shock or have to all of that my, like, my fantasy no. is like i'm just bringing in city players now after watching that last performance i think i think city will get a comfortable 3 4 3-0 but a clean sheet a after clean, fulham's goals clean sheet clean sheet for me Moving on to United versus West Ham, Rao. Look at that smile on your face. I know, I know, I know. The game versus Southampton. That must have been a breath of fresh air for you it guys. It has, but we've done it before. At the at Saint Mary's, Van Persie has turned the game around for us after missing a penalty. Cavani did it this time. Yeah, we went two nil down that time. I still remember he had a penalty. that he missed and then he scored off a 92nd or a 93rd minute corner taken by nani and southampton that season also had a 2-0 deficit turned around against city so they don't have their luck with you know but i mean Clubs. this one must have been a little more special right with after, after what you'll have been going through through the season um all the haters about cavani and how he's too old and how yeah. he shouldn't be in the premier league also a great move by solskjaer to bring him on for the second half and to change the game like that and now cavani he didn't just come on and score two goals he was very 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 involved in the game he missed a couple of chances he's looking like that out and out striker that united want and there's something that i see in him which i haven't really seen from a united player is that hunger to get, to score goals what the do you think funny stat there's a stat actually the funny thing about that is that cavani and ole past and present are the only two substitutes to be involved in three or more goals in a single game so you know cavani coming on having a header skim past the post yeah. getting an assist for bruno getting the two goals it just shows that there is another dimension to united's play now you there it's not you know just the wingers cutting in now there is an option to cross the ball because there is someone, someone to head it yeah and the guy he replaced have been crying out for ages marshall bench him he's too laid back bench him You benched him. Get Van der Beek on. Van what der about Beek comes that's on. What your your boy Donny? Yeah, look, just look at him. I mean, he yeah. had a fabulous he game. Did. He linked well. Yeah. He gave Bruno that little more freedom. And for all you haters over there, Bruno has four goals, non-penalty this season, more than any other midfielder. So you know, all the oh, Bruno only knows how to score penalties. Is don't laugh. You're one of them. Is all crap. We got a eighth away win. No, you know, for, like for sure. I mean, at the start of the season, I thought Bruno was, you know, your defensive player, kind of played the role of Pogba, only to distribute and everything. But now Ole has given him freedom to move around, and it's really, really working for United. And I thought it wouldn't, but he is really, really, really doing a good job, which is and great. And that's only because he's playing two defensive midfielders behind him. When a Pogba used to play, Bruno had that conservative role because Pogba is an idiot. Now that he has, you know, a Fred, a McTominay, a Matic, yeah. he doesn't have to worry about that much about that defensive part of the game. He is free to move. You know, he has Rashford, he has runners around him. He has Greenwood, he has Rashford, Marshall. Whenever he comes on, so he has that freedom to play. And with Van der Beek, also he will. I mean, he's not an out and out attacking midfielder. He, you know, sits in the middle. He'll do his defensive duty. So Bruno has that freedom now. Yeah. And it's showing. I mean, it's it showed in the Champions League game. It's showing in the Premier League game. And hopefully, it'll be you know more goals and more assists from that position. So now this is something I've been meaning to ask you. After the last game, what are your thoughts on Ole? I I've said it before. I will say it again. He made he made an impactful substitution. Yes, but that's a manager's job. I was happy. that he took marshall off yep. you know he dropped him whether injured or not he still dropped him i was happy about that but then again the clean sheets are not coming yep. you need to drop a maguire probably give tonzebe a chance give the other guys a chance he had a great game in paris that ruthlessness is still not there mm. you know how to tactically go about different games is still missing do you want him to stay i honestly don't you don't want him to I, stay even after that win i don't want him to stay but Of course, and, how things and, and, the and what about West Ham moving into the game against West Ham? They're, I'm actually worried about West Ham. They're a good team, man. They're a very, they're a very balanced team. 
and now and antonio's back antonio's and the one back. thing that worries me about west ham is both their wingers cut in united is not comfortable with wingers cutting in they've had their problems before last season with the restart with bergwijn cutting in even with the game against southampton yeah. when their wingers were cutting in against crystal palace causing problems exactly zaha playing you know or right footer on the left wing when he cuts in united has a problem yeah because the center backs are not positionally aware and the wing backs are on the weaker side that is my only worry with bowen fornals you know and antonio obviously making a mockery out of harry maguire in terms of strength and pace but going forward again united then are better yeah. than their defense yeah so i probably feel again it's going to be a case of who scores more yeah but uh, hopefully prediction i think it'll it'll be like a 3-2 or a 3-1 or even a 4-3 but for united for our away form <laughs> chelsea versus leeds at the bridge leeds are not defensively stable we saw that against everton chelsea are going crazy in attack they have players out but they have enough players now they have pulisic back they have havertz back Yeah. ZH didn't have for choice now. Yeah, and for some odd reason he decides to go with Mason Mount while I like him, but I still feel there is more quality on the bench. But again, Leeds with their heart and their running and you know, Mr. Manager sitting down on the touchline. Yes. So, what's your thought on the game? Um, I thought Leeds had a good game against Everton. Um, they did nothing wrong. Um, it was a great game of football to watch. Um, it was a game of goalkeepers, obviously, but it was a good game of football. I think uh, Phillips and um, I think um, what's his name? Luke uh, Ailing. Uh, yeah, Ailing, and they're just causing chaos on the wings. I think they're playing good free flow football also. Um, I think Rafinha is slowly getting comfortable in the Premier League, and uh, what a strike! Um, I think they'll cause some damage to Chelsea. Chelsea, I, I mean, I, they're playing well. They've got a great team, but um, I don't know. I, what are your thoughts on? I just the game? feel defensively, Leeds for me is a worry because even against Everton, it's not like Everton didn't have their chances. You okay. said game of goalkeepers. Yeah. So Everton had enough, There you know, penetration too, yeah, and yeah. so did Leeds. It's just that Leeds had that little bit more quality in terms of Rafinha. You know, I mean, I, and it was a goal that went through the legs of a defender. So you have to consider that. On the other side, Bamford's not scored in a couple of games. Yeah. You know, you have yeah. a one goal here. You have a nil all against He's Arsenal with plenty of chances. Yeah. So the finishing is a problem. Whereas with Chelsea, you never know who will, you know, turn up. You have a Ziyech who will go crazy. You have a Werner who will go crazy. You have Tammy. You have Giroud off the bench. Yeah. But having said that, in the last game, there was no goal from Chelsea. You know, no, I mean, they they, played, had, they tried everything. They, 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 I mean, Leeds also played well. They got their goal. Um, I mean, of course they played Spurs, but uh, Tammy tried everything. Um, they brought on Giroud. Giroud tried everything. Werner was trying to get his balls in from the left. Uh, they had no. They had no goal also. So, what do you think is going to be the outcome for a I Chelsea? I just think it, it, it was a different game against Spurs because you know it's different play, playing in a parking lot with Jose Mourinho. Like you know, parking like eight tempos over there. <laughs> game of chess. You really do hate Jose. Ah, oh, from <laughs> bottom of every part of my body, lungs, kidney, toes, everything. But I'm just saying that. Spurs, of course, you know a different side. Where I also felt Chelsea should have scored because they did not have Alderweireld in that game. You know they had a young defender, Rodon played yeah. over there. Chelsea should have made more. The fact that Werner came off in probably the seventieth minute or something like that says a lot about how well Spurs did defensively. Yeah, I don't see that same defensive strength in Leeds apart from a Luke Ailing, who you know will stick to a Werner. But apart from that, through the center. I'm not saying Tammy is devastating, but what is behind Tammy is what is devastating. Yeah. So that again, and how easily Leeds opened up, and then again, Leeds do not have what Chelsea have, which is a Thiago Silva. But but I I get that Leeds don't have what Spurs have in defense, but Leeds have that drive to attack teams that Spurs didn't do against Chelsea. So you don't think that they'll probably hit Chelsea on a counter no, or cause feel, some damage? I mean, them? on a counter, yes, Chelsea might get hit for pace, but then again. Like I said, a uh, Chelsea defense in Chilwell, James, Zuma, and Silva is much more equipped to handle a Leeds attack than probably what an Everton was. So we were talking about Chelsea being spoiled for choice. Who would you start in your in your top front for Chelsea? I think I would. While you know people are saying he plays off the left, I would still play Werner through the center. The best lineup they have would be playing Ziyech, Havertz, and Pulisic behind them. And play Kovacic and Kante. I cannot stand Jorginho. He is, 
he's just irritating like he just stands there a lot of people don't like jorginho yeah, he's he's reason. like pogba he's a luxury midfielder he'll step up he'll act all crazy take his penalty and that's it he doesn't like pogba as well i don't i don't <laughs> like pogba i mean it's obvious he's being like an idiot but again so kovacic only because he drives in and then that allows kante to just sit there and do what he does best with a thiago silva and then a mendy five clean sheets six games He's, he's in this year's Premier League, yeah. you know, where goals are flying in from every corner, is crazy. Yeah. Which is why I just feel Chelsea. I probably would even back them to keep a clean sheet, but at least get two or three pass leads. So final prediction? I think three nil Chelsea. Three nil to Chelsea. I'm gonna go with a two all. Our next game: uh, West Brom versus Crystal Palace. Uh, West Brom finally getting a win uh, against Sheffield. Crystal Palace losing to a Newcastle. What do you think? I've said it before Crystal Palace is a one man team. They they kind of proved me wrong in the middle with that 4-1, but they're back to it. There's no Zaha, there's no attack. There's there's no drive. You know, at least with a Zaha you knew that he could make something happen when the game is down. Yo, there's nothing. West Brom brilliant. I mean, they beat Sheffield, Sheffield still unbeaten, but they got their first win. They moved out of the relegation zone. They have been building up to this because the games they've had before that were not really bad, you know, just a 1-0 loss to Spurs. a lucky one nil loss to a united yeah. so it's it's not been bad for west brom it's just that you know like fulham the results weren't going their way but they've got the win i actually back them to beat palace this week in as well just because they have that momentum and palace have absolutely no drive because even against newcastle it was pretty placid you know in terms of attack but but looking at palaces is options up front they've got an ayu they've got a benteke and they've got a batsoi but they're all I don't know why aren't they doing more because there is no drive and Ayu is again a moody player is like I would like to call him yeah. Benteke has not played that much Batshuayi I feel has been rejected by the entire world and then has come to Palace because Hodgson has adopted him and said you know come play for me but apart from that there is nothing Townsend can run as much as he wants but if he does not release the ball they are not going yeah, to score absolutely useless I've had him in my uh, <laughs> FPL for so long you now. cannot there is there I is no valid explanation for having Andros Townsend in your FPL team yeah. uh, even Andros Townsend doesn't have Andros Townsend <laughs> in his FPL team <laughs> so quick one what are your predictions for this I day? think a 2-0 to West Brom I think a 1-0 to West Brom So moving on to our next game Sheffield versus Leicester Bramall Lane. Sheffield last year were eighth with 13 points. Now they are one point. What do you think? They they're just not I don't know there is there is something that has gone wrong with that unit. They never had the pace last year. They do not have the pace this year. <laughs> But they were very different last year. They were a team to go and beat. They were a unit. Last yeah, they were a un- they were a team to go and beat. Yeah. Like people did not take Sheffield lightly after the first few games. They were also really physical and good. In exactly, the air, and they have the players this yeah. time. You know, they have McGoldrick. They have the Burgers. They have yeah. Flex. They have Lundstrom. But there is just no intent shown. You know, from this team, they're playing. They're playing shabby football. And Leicester seems like the penalties have dried out. They're not getting the goals. Jamie Vardy seems to be quiet. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers not the kind of manager you know to go with go for so long with such bad results. He's a good manager. He's proved it in the past. They've beaten a City team, but I still feel with you know the run of form again. This game for me comes down to quality on paper, and Leicester obviously you know. the better side sheffield not performing one point in 10 games i mean probably associate only an arsenal but do you i mean we obviously know sheffield is looking at relegation and i think they will be relegated where do you see leicester ending the season do you see them top 4 until a couple of weeks ago maybe mm. but uh, again it depends on how wadi reacts after his injury coming back in with his goals So I still feel Leicester is a top six club only because of their manager and the fact that they have a goal scorer like Jamie Vardy. They've got in reinforcements for Fana's, you know, good. Chengiz Under is a good sub. Madison being on the bench just yeah. tells you about their squad depth. Yeah. You know, he's trying Harvey Barnes. He started last game and Barnes was benched last game. But, but he prefers a Harvey Barnes, you know, to play in that number ten yeah. because of his pace, pace. and his yeah. drive. Yeah. So I still see Leicester as a top six. 
But Sheffield, definitely, I feel if they lose this one, they're going down for sure. And what are your predictions for this one? I think Leicester three one or three nil probably. I think I'm gonna go with you on that three nil. Spurs versus Arsenal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. There is so much shit to talk about it. I will need this. But to start with it, Arsenal has ten goals. They've only scored more than the bottom four. They've conceded twelve. Okay, K uh, Kane has nine assists. Arsenal has face. eight. Son has nine goals. Arsenal has ten. Arsenal is on fourteenth. They've lost to Wolves. Their goal of the month was a penalty. <laughs> their top top striker is level on goals with their centre back, and a striker who's on the bench is their highest goal scorer. So without further ado, I bring to you Arsenal. What are your thoughts on this piece of shit team? Man, Arsenal are Arsenal are, are, are in deep trouble, man. This season, I don't even know what to say. Um, you were discussing this with Sammy the last week. They don't know what's happening. They don't know. I think Arteta is out of uh, options. He started uh, Oba on the left. He started uh, Laka in front. That wasn't working. Now he's moved Oba to the centre. He's brought on Saka. He's He's tried every combination there is for Arsenal, and I think it just nothing's happening, and I don't know why. And, and the one player he needs is sitting exactly like this on the bench, three hundred and fifty thousand a week, to I don't know, clap, get happy. He is that. He is the missing piece in that puzzle. I mean, he he is the one who would create something. You know, he's he's a creative player. He is something that he's someone who likes to run at defenses. He may not be the best defensive player. He may not be the most hardworking player, but he likes running at defenses, and that's what Arsenal need at this point in time. Exactly, they have nothing to the center. We've been crying about this from day one. Oba on the left, Willian on the right. You know, Enketia slash Lacazette in the middle. But who is that driving force? And now they don't even have Pachi Chi 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 Chia with them. <laughs> So who is going to stop Spurs who are rampant? Yeah. I mean they are saying that Kane may not play or he may play I don't know but even then looking at the form they are in looking at the organized the organization of the team is at at this point in time I think Spurs are going to just run over Arsenal at this point in time. Which is yeah which is the talk in the market because you know your Sons your Bergwijn's Kane if he's fit but again defensively physically now I spoke about this to someone Who is you know an Arsenal fan, and we had this discussion where physically in the center of the park, Arsenal are no match for Spurs. Yeah. Forget pace, forget skill, forget you know. No, I mean even the flanks. You got uh, Reggie on, you got Oria running down those flanks. They're going to cause some serious problems. I mean, I know Bellerin's back and and uh, Tierney, but I I don't see them stopping them. This yeah, week. and they're not going to score the goals for you. Yeah. You conceded more than you scored. And you're playing a team who has, you know, the top goals and the top assists in the league. No, wait. What was it? I'll, I'll rephrase that. You're playing the worst side in North London at their home with the giant B A double L S, and you think you're gonna win? But like they said, the only thing that Arsenal has working for them that it's a derby. Yeah. You know, it's something that pumps players. The the other thing that's working for them is David Luiz will probably not be fit for this game. So some sanity in defense, but yeah, I was again surprised last week. Yeah. Why was David Luiz not sent like taken off? Why was he not replaced? When why is he all bandaged and playing when you know a player is injured? Yeah. So and you head know, injury, it's, that yeah, was it's just serious. very yeah. it's just very bad calls from the management yeah. from the manager. While I like Arteta, I feel he's he's done too much. You know, I mean, he tries something every week. I think you got to stick to a plan and go with a plan and work on it for a bit. You know, if something doesn't work out, he moves into another form. If something doesn't work out, he changes his combination. And I think he needs to find a good combination and stick with it for at least two to three weeks and see if it works. I mean, that's the only thing I have to say about Arsenal at this point in time because I do not know how they're going to get out of this trouble that they're in right now. Yeah, and if you have a Podens who makes you know your centre back look like a child yeah. for that second goal, yeah. you can just imagine what Son's going to do, what Kane's going to do. 
So yeah, predictions. I mean, we both know Arsenal is going to lose, but by how many? No, I d- I don't think Arsenal is going to uh, lose this game only because uh, it's a derby. I'm going to go with a, a one all for uh, this one. There is a spirit inside that bean bag that is hugging you right Mangla now. Mangla name must be smiling. But no, and I'm going right for I'm going for a three nil Spurs. I think it's going to be, it's not going to be easy, but they're going to get the goals. Derby or no derby, there's no party. There's no party. Liverpool versus Wolves at Anfield. Let's start first with. Wolves is missing X factor Jimenez. Yeah, I mean, Crazy. very bad injury last yeah. game. You could hear it through your screens. So hopefully, you know, he's okay and mm-hmm. should be back soon. No one wants to see that happen. Yeah, it's not. just it. It was it was quite scary, honestly. Yeah. I speaking. mean, the good thing is he's he's fine. He's there's good a good word out of hospital that he's okay. So that's a good thing. Yeah, but now coming to the game, obviously Liverpool a little relieved that you know. With the fact that you don't have your full strength defense, there is no Raul Jimenez. But then again, without a Raul Jimenez, they beat Arsenal. And you've you've had your fair share of luck versus Wolves. You've had your fair share of results versus them. But then again, what you've not had your fair share of luck with yeah. is VAR. You had it against Everton, and you had it again against Brighton. So while Everton's done, let's talk about the Brighton VAR decisions. I mean. See, it's easy to accept the offsides. Okay, I I completely agree with that. That's fine, but the call on Robertson for the penalty was just disgraceful. It's just spoiling the game. I mean, the fact that Welbeck and five Brighton players also said that it wasn't a penalty is is crazy. I mean, it's it's not a penalty. It wasn't a penalty. I mean, the touch takes the ball so far away from Welbeck. There's no way he was getting. And I understand that as a referee, according to the rules, that's what the rule is. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But you have to take it in terms of context, right? Was Welbeck ever going to get to the ball? No. I mean, it's it's sad to see that. I mean, it's, because it's Liverpool, a lot of people are smiling, and it's okay. But it's sad to see things like this happen in football. I mean, what are your thoughts on it coming from a United? No, I VAR. I honestly feel you know, even last week against West Brom. Yeah. Similar to what happened to Robertson, the Bruno incident was also very, you know, it was a 50-50. Yeah. Where he nicked the ball, but he got the player. And it's happened in the past from, you know, the beginning of the season with Doherty, with Lindelof, with Dyer. VAR decisions, now they slowly started, you know, getting the referee going to the screen. Yeah. But then again, it's situational. Yeah. You know, you'll have Mr. Gallagher come on the post show and be like, okay, this is not yeah. handball. This much is handball, yeah. but then situations. Yeah, you can't you can't uh, judge a Patrick Bamford offside just because he's pointing where he wants the ball. Yeah, and that was a one nil situation where he scored it's, it's one game all, changed, and right? the game changed. Yeah. So even here, you know, this was an important three points for Liverpool. Yeah, the penalty came late, you know, and this is after you've you know got yourself out of a mess with mope missing his penalty yeah, yeah. so it's not like it, you weren't at your best performance i'm taking nothing away from brighton in fact i think brighton deserved 3 points for the way they played and the game they had because liverpool were not, it wasn't their best performance like you just said brighton came out with all guns blazing they had a really really good game i think I, mope i don't know what it is about mope. mope is like that that five year old kid who goes down to play in his building with his bat and then someone bowls him out and he la- and everyone laughs at him and he just takes his bat and goes home big, and no one's allowed to play after that you know what he just it's like he cried after he missed that penalty and just walked off the field you know it's it's, it's I, disgraceful i i don't like him ever since you know his celebrations against arsenal against united the attitude is wrong you know there's it's a different thing being a good player scoring your goals but yeah. being disrespectful is fine but then again brighton take nothing away take nothing away from but brighton. liverpool being 1-0 up you know grinding that result out is important in a season like this especially for you guys where half your team is injured yeah. the other half looks like getting injured any moment yeah. so it was important to get that result out yeah. the penalty given you know brighton gets a point you miss a chance of going top of the table yeah but again one question i have is why was mane on the bench i mean klopp klopp had a, he's he's been rotating the team a lot um and you can't blame him because there's been game after game after game after game with the the injuries are not make it any easier for liverpool he uh, i don't know if you saw the post match where he took off on the journalist and uh, i think it was completely uncalled for half of our injuries were not only because these players are being overworked it's also because of bad tackles and we've seen that especially during the everton game so 
I don't I I don't think it's necessarily all because players are being overworked, but uh, I I I I it's not going to get any better coming now in this next month. So I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. So yeah, like again the overwork bit. Yeah, <clears throat> Liverpool. See, it could be it could be overwork during training sessions as well. You know what I mean? Like if they are playing so much of football, don't don't do such intensive train uh, training sessions. You know, it's as simple as that. So we'll have to see. But then again, like I was saying, last year you won the title yeah. because your core was the same. Yeah. You know, your eleven was mostly unchanged. Probably yeah. one or two players here and there, but. You still had that gap. We didn't have the situation we have now. While I understand he has to rotate players, but then again, Mane has been one of your best players. Jota's in form. Yeah. I agree. Firmino had a great game against Leicester. I agree. But for me, keeping Mane on the bench was a stupid decision. Not a bad or not a very good decision, but a stupid decision because he is your best player. He is your fittest player. and he's probably your fastest player definitely i think i think his decision to keep mane on the bench was also because we wanted to confirm uh, the champions league spot so he wanted that rotation he wanted that rest for the players and you can understand where he's coming from but i completely agree with you i don't think mane should have been benched i think he should have gone with all guns blazing uh, play mane play jota play for menu and play sala if at all you know because the premier league is something that you cannot afford to slip in and you've seen the top of the table right now it's crazy It's you can't afford to even draw a game now. We've drawn one game. We've uh, uh, we've we've lost one game, and we are still like second. And it, it it just it just goes to show how crazy. And you can't. It, it just goes to show that you can't afford to drop points in any way. And I think that you should go all guns blazing and play your your strongest team in a, uh, every time you can. Exactly. And speaking of Champions League, I mean, he started with Jota, Mane, and Salah in the Champions League. Yeah. So it's it's I don't know it's very confusing what Klopp is doing. Of course, you know the situation with rotating players, etc. Yeah. But I still feel that a player like Mane cannot, cannot be put be on the bench. bench. So probably that was one. I mean, he came on and scored, but again, you know, yeah. ruled out. So prop, you know, take that decision against Wolves. Get a Mane in with a five at the back. I think he's going to play a full strength against uh, Wolves. I mean, by full strength, I mean the strongest team we have. He's going to start. Um, he's going to start Mane for Mino and uh, uh, Salah, and I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, if he throws in a Jota as well, it would be Jota difficult to bend Jota now with the run yeah. he's on. Even Jones is playing superb football at this point in time. So I don't know, man. Let's see. But play I all. I play. Throw play twenty-two in players. Throw everyone in there. <laughs> <laughs> Predictions. Ah, Wolves. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a two nil Liverpool. I think he'll edge it, but one nil to Liverpool. Brighton versus Southampton at the Amex Stadium. Okay, now Southampton haven't lost to Brighton in the last seven meetings. That's a pretty cool stat there. What are you, what are your what are your I thoughts? I feel it's going to change. Okay. I feel Brighton, you know, had an impressive game like we just discussed versus Liverpool. With less possession, they created. a lot yeah tarik lamty not having tarik lamty that too who at right back seems like one of their best players southampton on the other hand you know while they're getting the goals i feel set with ings out yeah it's with james ward prowse i mean exactly. he's in been involved in six four goals to assist but yeah. apart from that like we said you know if there's no danny ings then does a shay adams give you the goals ward prowse is doing that but who apart from it armstrong is getting the chances he's not scoring yeah defensively like we saw against united like we've seen before against spurs they're not the strongest yeah. they've conceded goals yeah. and i feel brighton is just due that you know one victory a one impressive victory so i just feel brighton is going to edge this one because of the fact that I don't know. They just they they higher on confidence getting that point against you know, Liverpool. Uh, like we like we just spoke about in the earlier segment. I mean, they had a really good game against Liverpool. Um, Welbeck and Connolly on those flanks are just like creating so many chances for them. I think they had like ten shots against Liverpool, uh, which is a a pretty impressive way to go about meeting a team like Liverpool in the form that they are in. Um, Southampton also. Not a bad game against United. I mean, I know they they they're working on their set pieces and they're getting it. Um, Ward Prowse is just he's beautiful to watch magician. him. Yeah, he's a magician. He get he finds the people if he has to, and he also finds the back of the net when he ha- when he needs to. I mean, they've got great aerial presence with your Westergaards and your Shea Adams and everyone in there. But um, I think that I I still think Brighton are looking like the the team to yeah, go. Yeah, like forward. you said, if you go and play a Liverpool side, and you know you come out to the point. After you've missed a penalty, yeah, 
it just speaks volumes of and again again i'm mentioning tarik lamti because he's been that driving force even yeah. though it's from right back yeah you know they've got lalana they've got salim arch they've yeah. got the goals there they've got players who can control a game and southampton kind of seemed demotivated after united got the equalizer yeah after that goal you just felt that united is going to nick one and win it yeah southampton were deflated and after going 2 nil up 2 nil up exactly so i just feel that again brighton's do that one big one yeah. and i feel they're probably going to have a 2 nil or a 3 nil over southampton nice so 2 nil 2 nil or 3 nil what two we'll play it safe i'm going to go with the one nil united looking for their ninth away win and city looking to carry on from where they left off and i never thought i would say this but arsenal is involved in the biggest game this weekend Also guys for those who've not checked it out go watch our episode with Karan Sahani ex Kerala Blasters striker on our page also a big shout out to Sandesh from the All Balls team for creating those beautiful digital artworks for us for all our interviews and for everything else possible um if you if you can go check out his work in our description below it's beautiful also do not forget to like share subscribe leave your comments in the section below click the bell icon and do not forget to catch another episode of All Balls stay safe